Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees, and today I'm thrilled to be joined by the king of figures and moving sculpture, Shepard Clark. Shepard, welcome to The Skating Lesson. Thank you, Dave. I'm happy to be here. I haven't seen you like in a couple of weeks, so I'm thrilled. We've missed you. How are you doing? I'm well. Debbie and I have been training, making progress, working on the 10th anniversary of the World Figure Sports Society World Figure and Fancy Skating Championships and a lot of other things. Well, you don't send me your training clips, so I'm upset about that because I send you mine. So, you know, I would like to see okay. what Shepard is doing, okay? Will do. All right. Well, this is this and that. We are going to be discussing everything that happened at the Cup of China and going on in the world of figure skating. And I'm wearing my Shepard Clark original bracelet, which is a perfect nice. <laughs> opportunity to wear it. Shepard, what did you make of the Cup of China this weekend? It was interesting to see some new faces. Um, I think that there's a movement in skating to bring legitimate <clears throat> art onto the ice. I think that these skaters, they're very, very talented, very good skaters. And I think that the challenge today um, that, you know, Chalk and Bates are leading the way, kind of becoming their own in, in the foot, following in the footsteps of Torval and Dean heading into their fourth Olympics. I think that they're really leading the way, even though they weren't in Cup of China, mm -hmm. um, of a movement to take skating to another level artistically. Mm -hmm. When you competed, especially under 6-0, like, are we romant? Am I romanticizing that I felt like there was more moving art at that time? Or was it still like there were the best few and then everyone else? Or was it just that like I liked the else better? Like what what is the Skating's character, my skating career really bridged a period from when figures were the majority in the 70s all the way to the early 2000s. I had a very, very long career. It lasted about 30 years. And during my career, we saw skating um, change fundamentally. Um, now, because of the nature of the sport, the requirements, skaters really um there's there's more of a formula that they have to follow mm -hmm. and i think that you know the exhibitions are fun and people watch the exhibitions but more people pay attention to the the major competitions and in the competitions the skaters really don't have the time mm -hmm. to allow the audience to be involved in something and be uh relaxed and take something in, like tell a story, take so someone somewhere. Um, I think telling a story or conveying a, a message is much, 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 much more difficult. Not impossible, more possible in ice dance probably. But I think that uh, there definitely is a place for skating as the most artistic activity on earth, or you could make an argument that it is certainly the most artistic sport to be the crystal stage and take people uh, on what I like to call the jewel journey. Well, you know, this is your fault because now I've become obsessive because I do my figures every day and I'm watching how it's changing right. my skating, but I'm also applying it when I'm watching. And and I was watching, you have to go to Tony Wheeler's YouTube channel. Everyone needs to, he keeps uploading. He got this tremendous archive. Um, a big skating fan passed away and had these videos. I was the second person in line to get him and he got him. So everybody needs to go follow this channel because he's uploading it for us and all of that work and this videos need to be seen. And I was watching Queen Jill Trenary this morning, who we love, right? And why is she not on the black ice judging, getting her crown and her tiara, which she deserves, right? But I was just watching her core when she skated and her edge control, right? From the 95 Tour of Champions. And I was watching Cup of China and I was saying the difference is, is that when, in my opinion, you can tell me if I'm wrong or what, but when skaters did figures, they had to focus on alignment so much. They had to focus on posture. They had to focus on like, you know, the core, you know, and everything radiating from the solar plexus, right? That I don't really see that in the skaters today who are doing these jumps but they don't have the same technique and the same control going in. You know, they're doing Lutzes on flats because they never did them from the back outside edge, right? And their body, but they're being judged on this standard that came from that, but no one is developing their bodies. That's an interesting them. point. That's a very interesting point, Dave. I think, you know, when I watch the skaters, I, 
I'm in awe of what they're able to deliver. They're amazing, right? They are, young they are. are when they deliver it. It's it's really it's extraordinary. Um, it it in itself is staggering. Mm -hmm. I think that when we bring up a skater like Jill Trenery, who is absolutely a masterpiece, she was uh, skating produced um, these beautiful, like human works of art. The costume, she was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Jill Trenery is one of the prettiest skaters of all time. And she had great figures. Uh, I used to train with her and do shows with her all the time. I used to like on occasion run into her in practice. We took from the same coach. Um, we were both focused so much on what we were doing. Don't run. She missed a year of competition because someone ran into her. Didn't she like ruin her calf muscle or something? Yeah, like that just, wasn't me. You know, that was me better not have been. Okay, <laughs> you were the one who ran into Jill Trenner. I can't take credit for that. <laughs> okay, yeah, but I have to say that she was very encouraging to me and. Um, an amazing, amazing skater who was really right at the end uh, of when figures, I think the 1990 Worlds that she was world champion was the last uh, world championships where figures were incorporated. And uh, I was so happy to see her as world champion because uh, I, I grew up watching Jill skate and then I trained with her and she was very encouraging to me in the junior and junior worlds. And then as a young senior. And she skated to the mermaid by Yanni choreographed by queen Renee Roca, who was Renee I mean, Roca. Oh my gosh. That's another story. Renee Roca. I was always a big fan of Renee Roca. I can't say enough about Renee Roca. She's a cool person and very, very smart. Very smart. But what I was noticing and, you know, I was trying to think about what really got me into skating. Right. And I was watching Jill this morning and, I was thinking about how she had so much control in her, you know, core that she could do any movement on the ice because she had that core stability from proper development. And I just don't think that skaters today are developed in the same way. When I watch these skaters that are doing Beelman's and they're very flexible, but their cores aren't strong in the same, not in this, on the same level, right? Different. And, it's it's yeah. different. They're, they're incredible skaters, but they skating has fundamentally changed. Mm -hmm. I think it's important for skaters to have a place to graduate to, to maintain the world professional artistic skating legacy mm -hmm. and the figure legacy that the fact that they're combined was always kind of like a fantasy of mine many years ago. I thought, well, you know, what if you took the bookends of skating like figures and world pro, what if you had the world pro skaters do figures? You know, I always thought about how interesting that would be. And like, sure enough, you know, <laughs> We have that now. So, you know, someone like Jill Trenery, I really do. I reached out to her. I I think she is a perfect example of an iconic world. Does champion. she know how beloved she is? She's one of my bucket list skaters. Like, does she know that we revere her as the queen that she is? Like, does she? I don't think she knows that. I, I just I have this gut feeling. You know, she's, that... she's a very like very interesting person that people look at her and and put her on a pedestal because she was just so beautiful and dick button loved the way her pelvis and her hips would move and the way that her costumes would they were just like haute couture i mean they were like the highest level like we'd seen in skating and um i think that even though she had this incredibly powerful persona that she didn't view herself in the same way she was very um like had kind of like a uh a, a, a spirit that that would have kind of been like the opposite of that oddly enough so I, I think letting her know. Yeah, um, we, she needs to know. Because yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, and I think she was the perfect skater for television broadcasts at that time because they always did profiles on her, the up close and personals. But she was so authentic in front of the camera that it was captivating because you could see the mix of talent and, and nervousness and ner you know, all anxiety, all of it come together made her so captivating. It made her a bigger star. I mean, for her to miss a figure and be crying on the payphone to her father and nailing the short program, like that's what we want to see on a broadcast. You know, the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat. I mean, what figure was she crying over, Shepard? I'm sure she could have nailed it. You know, a rocker. Okay. I think that it. she might have been blinded on the ice by um, glare. Okay. It, it's possible to not be able to see 
your center as you're coming around on the first tracing and to miss it. And if you miss, it's called missing your center. It's like putting your foot down. If you miss your center, even though the, the figure may be beautiful, the deduction, it's it's such a huge mistake that's like, you can't come back from it. That's why figures were so crazy back in the day. You put your foot down or you miss your center um, or you don't make it back to your center. You'd run out of speed. And truly your career could be over because skating was largely building momentum, one competition to the next, because we didn't compete that many times. Mm -hmm. So it really was nerve wracking and nail biting because one of those kind of mistakes um, could end your career. And for her, it, I think it, it wasn't helpful to her momentum uh, from, um, you know, previous years. Mm -hmm. Well, she did win. We're glad she won. She was phenomenal. Midori was phenomenal. It was a great rivalry. Uh, it made the sport better. Um, now, I'm curious what you think of the ice dance. I think the ice dance is the most interesting discipline right now because there it is the closest to moving art. And this Gillis and Poirier Weathering Heights program. Someone rudely said that because I didn't love this program. I obviously didn't know the story or the novel. And I believe they said the movie, first of all, it was the first novel we read in English class in 10th grade in Miss Harmon's May She Rest in Peace. And she just made us love this novel of Wuthering Heights of Kathy and Catherine and Heathcliff and what was happening. And I don't feel that when I watch this, but I don't think that the music of Wuthering Heights is instantly recognizable, right? I don't know that a judge from Kazakhstan or China or Japan is going to get that reference the way they would understand Prokofiev, Romeo and Juliet, right? So I think you have to make the story happen. And I don't feel it in the same way of when I watched Chalk and Bates's Pink Floyd and you pointed out the painting um, of uh, Salvador Dali that they are using. Distance of memory. Yeah, I don't, I think that that's a much more recognizable image that someone can key into. And I think that's the genius of Marie France. The realism. <laughs> like and Madison Chalk and Mathieu Caron together. And and I, I just, I don't feel it. When I watch, you know, I love this clip of Natalia Duba saying that we need a long neck. The neck must be gold. It must be gold. If it's gold, it will be good, right? I don't get a cold neck from Piper Gillis or the Italian team. Okay, I don't even know if they have necks because they're like this when they're skating. Madison Chalk's neck is freezing, okay? It's so cold, can you get her a muffler, right? I mean, I want the cold neck and I don't see it from this team. And I don't see the line or the posture that I think, and I think it it detracts. As much as I wanna like, I can't, it, I, I get taken out of the performance. Chalk and Bates, and I'm not just saying this because they're Americans, um, have set the bar so high, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like they've been in three Olympics, you know, and they're they're creating art. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, when she stands on his boot and her leg is extended and they are going around in a circle, I mean, come on, there's nothing like this happening in this Wuthering Heights program. Next level, yeah. So I have to, I have to give them a shout out again. Uh, I think that, I think that Piper and, and Paul are great skaters. Mm -hmm. They're obviously like, I mean, they look good. They've got like really good control and they've got wonderful knees and um, they are able, what you said, I think really hits the nail on the head in terms of concept that is um, part of, part of, part of skating is, which I'm, I'm glad to see is is mental where you do your research and come up with something that even if a person doesn't know necessarily know Salvador Dali, mm -hmm. when when they do, um, it's genius. It, it's like oh my gosh, that's extremely cool. Um, but the program is avant garde. It's 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 kind of it suggests like surrealism in its own kind of ice skating way. Mm -hmm. uh, that to me conceptually is genius. So like in, in world art, we have like relevance, originality and mastery. So mm -hmm. if we look at relevance, what is your message? How creatively do you deliver your message and how technically brilliant um, is the is the work? So with regard to the Canadian ice dance team, I think they're extremely well-trained. Obviously mm -hmm. they're very, very good. 
Um, I think that they they're conceptually they can come up with something that um, in 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 terms of like the theme. Um, one last thing on them. Um, there was a team I used to do shows with periodically from a certain country, and I was a big fan of theirs. And this was just before the Olympic Games, and they could have been like first, second, or third. And I saw their free dance, and I was I was concerned because as even though I wasn't a, a an ice dancer, I could see that the the theme might not have been powerful enough with enough uh, uniqueness and creative punch to it to hold their own again with what they were up against. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say who it was, but it turned out that that ended up being true. Mm. Yeah, I, I kind of agree here. And I don't think that any of the teams are unbeatable, but what? I, but there are rumblings, Shepard, that Papadakis and Cizeron might be coming back next oh year. Oh my gosh. Which the sport needs nice. to move Amazing. forward. I mean, that would be just incredible. And I believe that they should come back and reclaim their crystal tiaras, um, their Shepard Clark bracelets, you know, they, <laughs> they need them, okay? They need to feel Why joy, not? you know? They need more gold, okay, right? Um, <laughs> yes, dripping, right? You Look, never can have too much treasure. Yes, so, and I think the sport, and oh my gosh, will that like upset Madison Chalk and bring her to a next level of ferocity? Like, I wanna watch that, right? I don't know. Oh, I, you mentioned over text message something you, you 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 threw a dig in there that was a little subtle, but you said that you felt that Gillis and Poirier should raise their fashion. And I was like, oh, the drab gray and whatever that pink material he's wearing in the pan. That was that was not worthy of the crystal stage, in my opinion, Shepard. That those costumes are just not it. Well, you know, you never know what people may be contending with in to deliver mm -hmm. what they deliver and i appreciate them i love they they look like really nice i don't really know them but they look like really great people and they're great skaters they've come a very long way i do think i do think at this stage in the history of the sport we've never seen such spectacular fashion mm -hmm. and i think that's one of the distinguishing characteristics of skating that makes it really fun to be a figure skater and in the in the figure skating culture. It's like a star art culture. And I think that we can have more fun with our costumes. And um, I encourage the skaters. I love their skating. I want to commend all of them, but I, I would encourage the skaters to really um, up their game on their fashion. On okay? and off the ice. Are you okay with my fashion on the ice? I think it's I think it's good. I think oh the picture that you showed me earlier, I'd like to take because of your the black hair, the dark hair from your skates all the way up to your hair to your fingertips to create more of a line and uh, mechanics in your the the functionality of your fashion that gives movement to the moving sculpture. So more dance, less like skate. Like like people want to like like skaters want to just skate like and go rather than dance and move and choreographically um, be unpredictable. Like, a, like a, a wild exotic animal in the jungle. You cannot take your eyes off of it because it's unpredictable. Well, you know who's making my fancy program, did I tell you? Ms. Renee Roca. So she has, wow. yes. So we're gonna, we're gonna we'll, we'll talk about the fashion and the music and the whole deal. Yes, okay. I'm impressed. I'm impressed, well, please give uh, Renee, a, a big hug for me. I am. A, I've always been a fan, but I, I really, she was great to me uh, coming up, and and I have uh, a lot of. Um, I took a lot away from observing the ice dancers. By the way, um, I like to watch you in the 2016 World Figure and Fancy Skating Championships because there were three male divas on the ice that were doing creative figures at the same time, and there's a video, and I don't think it's dramatic enough in the commentary, but there's King Shepard, who's the grand dame of the figure competition, right? There was Christian Hendricks and Gary Beacom on the ice together. Was that a, a competitive locker room? Was it collegial? Was it all oh, of it? We... We were all really nervous and freezing. <laughs> we were so cold, but we, you know, figures when you're cold, it's it's really difficult. But very encouraging to one another. I know Trixie Shuba was working with Christian. She worked with with me a, a bit. 
Um, but I know that she had worked with Christian and Christian really wanted to lay out a great change loop, forward change loop we had as one of our figures in 2016 in Toronto. So um, his patch was next to mine. And as he was skating his figure, he had one of those moments where, and I've, I've had it too, where your skates like hit each other and you trip. Okay. Um, and in the competition, he's skating his figure and he trips and he stumbles. He's, he's, he stumbles out of his figure and he goes, really, really, you know, and I'm like going around mine. I'm trying not to like, I felt so bad for him, but like we all laugh and have a good time. And I'm trying to like not chuckle and like mess mine up, you know, but Christian um, was someone I knew from the time I was about 14 and uh very special person that we all love and miss. Yeah. Well, I'll put the link in the description so everybody can see it, but it's it's a great, great video and you need to spend time and look at, you know, how good Gary's was and yours. You did the Olympic rings. Uh, yes. So I, I loved it. Okay. I am curious what you make of Green and Parsons, because to me, they're trying to come up, you know, it's their second year with Charlie White. And there was politics in U.S. skating, allegedly. There was a meeting at the Chesapeake Open, I remember, because, you know, Terry Tuberidza brought her daughter to Virginia. So then this team left because they didn't want to be upstaged. Maybe maybe um, Kiliakov was spending, uh, paying attention to Diana Davis during Green and Parsons' lesson. And one empowered figure skater who knew her worth said absolutely not. And they exited left on a Thursday. Uh, and... This was interesting because they're now with this new team that's trying to come up. And you could see that last year they had this very boring program. This year they are trying to do be more avant-garde. And it seems like it's almost there, but like they need an outside consultant. And I'm wondering what you make, because to me, this free dance is like, I think that the idea was good, but the execution is not quite there. Oh, yeah, it's... I think universally, um, I know when I did the Grand Prix, um, I just remember that it, it would take uh, another month or two, maybe three, for the programs to really be comfortable and be performed. Um, but it's much harder in ice dance in Paris, especially ice dance. So, it you know, typically uh, when we see a concept like a Chalk and Bates or a, a, a team like that with a really innovative concept, um, I could pick up on little moments here and there when it probably wasn't what they were intending, but it was close. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, this brings another thing. When we see perfection or something close to it, I think people forget that it's really, really easy for, for these timings and the, the sink and the skaters, the knees to be off. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see a lot more of that when you skated your entire life, you can pick up on it in October and November and then as we get closer to like the people's uh, championships and worlds um, that these programs get perfected. I, I think it's a lot. Again, I think the standard is so high now. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that I'll just have to say in general, the world is crazy. Um, and so people could be very distracted and that to stay on. I give the skaters now a lot of credit the last few years with everything that's gone on to be able to just focus and to keep improving despite all of the outside challenges. And I, I will also say that there is peripheral stress, stress on parents, stress on coaches, stress on people um, that might filter into these relationships with these young people uh, just because of um, it's unavoidable in the world today. So I, I mean, I recognize that, that there may be great concepts um, Anything that people put out on this level at, at this point with what's going on is uh, uh, extraordinary, in my opinion. Well, I, I have to say that you talk about people being distracted and I feel like, you know, there's so much emphasis on Charlie being a top coach. He was, you know, a gold medalist and yeah, yeah. champion. But his wife, Tanith, was one of the great works of art of U.S. Ice Dance and one of the great personalities. And I don't think we're seeing her enough in this team and enough of her expertise and personality in terms of performance and packaging and when she took out that letter and she performed like why is Caroline not spending more time with Queen Tanif and working on this because I think Charlie needs to utilize her more with this team they need more 
spice to come alive. You know, there, there are there are people with whom I've uh, I performed, and uh, I've been around from the time they were very young. Uh, you know, Shaylin, Tanith, and the people of that generation who are very, very, very strong women. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, to do what they've done. Uh, I'm impressed by in the extreme. Um, and I think that there are fundamental skating skills. Uh, as, as an example, there's a pair team that I'm following very closely um, that I'm connected to in a personal way. They're young. And uh, they had a, a lesson with, with Shaylin. And mm -hmm. it was three hours on just stroking. And it was more, and I could see that that's, they really need to work on that. But mm -hmm. the point is that there are people um, like Tanith who are you know, from like more of my generation of, of competitor who are bringing to the table um, and maybe they do need to be seen more. Um, I, I haven't noticed as much as maybe you have, mm -hmm. but uh, Charlie White uh, and Tanith, uh, you know, obviously are, uh, uh, a, a power couple. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> At least, right? <laughs> uh, uh, what do you make of the second place team here? They were within a point of Gillis and Poirier, Marjorie and Zach, uh, Le Joie and La Laga. What did you make? I thought I started to see them rise to another level at this competition than we have seen before. I, I I was just noticing her beautiful back on some of the spins and that she looks like she's really coming alive as a very strong woman. You talk about, you know, there's always talk about the men being strong in ice dance, but she's a very strong female ice dancer. Yeah, that's uh, like a flower, um, sort of like a blooming kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and we oftentimes, that's a good thing. A good point you brought up is, with so much attention to the lady. And one of the things I love to see is these teams who have distinctive male partners, uh, like like uh, going back one more time, I'm sorry, because it relates to what you're saying. Um, Chalk and Bates, I almost think that, um, you know, Evan calculatingly skates in very conservative costumes. It's, it's kind of like cool and it's a thing. Um, I almost wish I could see more like synchronicity in their attire so that they look like one piece moving together and it and in you know in a way they kind of have not done that calculatingly which is interesting i've analyzed it so with the with the other team i think um it's it, it's i would i would i would emphasize to find ways of making the male skater as distinctive um as like, for instance, Anasina Pizerat. Mm -hmm. That was to me, like, that was crazy. I love them. <laughs> or like a Tessa and a Scott, right? <laughs> <laughs> and a Platov, you know, like you need, yes. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree with you. Um, yeah, I do. I think Marjorie and Zach are blooming though. I, I see. Yeah. Yeah. If he can get his free leg extension better and work on that, I would really think that they would take it up a notch, but they're moving ahead and, and we'll be at the final. And I think it's very exciting. Uh, Figure see. skating's, I think, greatest asset right now is the ice dance. It's mm -hmm. become so fascinating. And we are seeing these programs con conceptually, people are raising the bar so that non skating. People can look at this and say, my, my gosh, you know, what I'm looking at is superhuman. I mean, it yeah. really isn't. It, I stance is like the big success, in my opinion. I agree. Right mm -hmm. But the other big success this week was Queen Deanna Stellato taking her second gold <laughs> on the grand. Yeah, Deanna. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> what do you make of her personality, her her line in the lifts, every perseverance, you know, yeah. like um, longevity, um, re up. Uh, Packaging and rebranding, uh, redefinition. Um, taking oh, her fashion, that yeah. short program dress is just stunning. Okay, that is incredible. That yeah. uh, you know, I, when I was a child, I ne I was like kind of a nerd. I didn't have like cool practice outfits, hmm. and um, you know, it was only later on that I kind of started to cultivate a, a look for my, you know, as a skater. But 
I just never had anything as cool as the little kids have today. <laughs> it's like I was watching these young skaters coming in uh, who are in China and uh, the, the the costumes and the makeup almost looked like some kind of exotic theater. I mean, it was like, it was really impressive. Very cool. And I, I can't stand it when they try to like shy away from that in skating. These are the things that distinguish skating and separate it that other sports wish they could be. We need to like celebrate that, you know? I plan my practice outfits every day, just so you know. Okay, like good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you need to emphasize your colors. And I wasn't wearing the tights one day, and someone messaged me yelling at me out of the blue, and I was like, "All right, I'll fix the stuff." Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What's going on here? Yeah. So uh, basically, I had to represent. Like, I had like looser fitting pants on and he was like, how dare you? I was like, all, all right. Okay. So okay. yeah, but, hmm. you know, I think <laughs> you know, tone for practice. And now that I'm doing right. figures, I want a proper figure sweater on when I'm practicing. You know, it's kind of, it, it, it's not to take away from like the athleticism, whatever, but it is, it is a fashion show in a sense. And, and people look from the outside and they say, I, I want to, I want to do that. I want to be a part of that, you know, even on the yeah. periphery. I agree. I, I agree. <laughs> so it's, it, it's part of the whole performance of the practice. Right? Well, yeah. Speaking of performance, did you ever see that video of the reenactment they do in every spring in China uh, of the ice skating show that's the reenactment for the Emperor of China from the uh, the Qing Dynasty? Oh. What you is never this? That? No. See, there was a, a, a Song Dynasty Emperor who was who loved to go ice skating a thousand years ago? Thousand. Okay, we're talking about Cup of China, okay? That's, so, no, like, we're talking about a thousand mean, years ago that uh, people were skating. In the Song Dynasty, yeah, crazy, huh? And back they were they had metal blades. Um, skating was known and and participated in, particularly um, so there were they trained warriors to travel okay. faster across the ice. Um, that's a that's a cultural fact uh, uh, from China, Chinese history. And um, there was a an ice show that was exclusively for the emperor and his court and the palace that was held like uh, back in the, the early um, Qing dynasty. So uh, 1700s, you know. So um, this ice show, uh, there's a depiction in the uh, the, the palace museum that has over 2000 characters in it. It's a painting that shows this ice show for the emperor. And the grand finale, they say, was the concubine of the emperor presented as a jewel at the end. Like it's, it's, it's like people in skating don't know this, you know? Oh, I don't know how to go research this. You know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun, you know? Yeah, well, I think Deanna Stellato is that jewel being presented at the end. She wants to be world champion this year and I think they're gonna get it, you know, and I, uh... She's I heading have... in the right direction. I've never seen pairs more open than it is. And, and that brings me to another thing. We've lost Oleg Protopopov. You know, I used to go to his home with, uh, with, with Ludmilla and have dinner and I did shows with them and I visited with them and they worked with me. And I, I'm, I'm blessed to be able to say that, but now he's gone. And I think they were the first two, um, I know we're talking like Ice Dance and, you know, the, all the events in Cup of China, but that was a legacy that's the longest uh, winning streak, I think, in Olympic history in any sport ever is the Russian pairs skating. But um, as far as like ice dance and pairs and Cup of China uh, and De Deanna, I'm really proud to see, uh, I'm really proud of her and I'm glad to see that she's succeeding as she is. And I do think that, uh, I do think that she's, uh, there's there 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 is a, a window open for people in just almost any of the events. I think chalk and base are going to be very strong. Mm -hmm. I think Deanna will be strong too. And I think what what really, I actually her performance was not perfect, and obviously she wasn't happy. And I thought it was all perfection because yeah. I remember when Queen Michelle Kwan would compete, she would always do Skate America and then Skate Canada. And she would win Skate Canada, but it was never as good as Skate America because she wanted to come out with a bang and then you need to dip and then you need to come up and then you need to excel at the end. And I feel like Deanna is on that same yeah. trajectory. And yeah. and you go to China, which is a very difficult flight, you know, you're and they're not there long enough to acclimate, right? To the yeah. time. And they competed very late. The pairs was the final event, right? And or at least 
one of the days they were competing very late. And you think about this, I think I have it wrong in terms of, the, but um, they were competing late. You know, the, what the time change is, especially back in Montreal. And you have to think, okay, they're there. And what the thing is, sometimes she would struggle on the triple sow cow. Last year, they didn't do the triple sow cow because Deanna was missing it when they switched techniques. Yeah. This year, she had a little eh, on the triple sow in that amazing performance at Skate Canada. She nailed it here. Yeah. And she will get there. It's her confidence and her feistiness that drives this team. Yeah. She's the one yelling in the lift when the side by side spins on when to change, if you watch. She's yeah. driving this, right? And you watch her and it's like, she's blooming, right, right now. And she fought, yes, there were errors, right? There were little, she had to fight for the throws, but she's coming out on the right side. Watch how much she fought on that double axle in the first jump sequence, the triple axle, single axle, double axle. She fought like crazy and came out on the right side of that. That's someone who's moving ahead. You know, that's someone who's gaining confidence. So she has the experience, she has the years and, um... I just give her a, a huge amount of credit. I'm I'm amazed by how she's- she, I think that that lift, when her leg is extended up and she's down, is moving sculpture. And I want some plus fours and fives. Yeah. Really at the end of the year because yeah. they deserve it. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to hear more from the judges about what a plus four and a plus five is, you know? Like that's, uh, what do you have to do to get a plus four, plus five, you know? Even Chuck and Bates weren't getting plus fours and fives, but- they throw them out like Halloween candy at the world championships at the end of the year. I mean, I think it's all kind of ridiculous, but when you're watching that many teams at the end of the year, I think that then you see the scores because they have to differentiate. Trick so. and treat. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> like you're talking a lot about China and a lot about, um, uh, you know, different things. I have to say that Pong and Wong, this Sorcerer's Apprentice, um, choreographed by Lori Nickel was phenomenal. And she actually texted me the other day and I was in the middle of like such a stressful day at work. And I was like, I can't, I can't even read this right now because I'm like, eh. so Jonathan and I are getting a book club together and yeah. I wanted to reach out to her because we're reading the John Curry book first. And Lori Nickel was the muse in his last production that was never finished for the Firebird, which is like Truman Capote's answered prayers, which was never finished, right? And it was like, we need to know about this, right? From Queen Lori herself with the Firebird, which yeah. Evan Isaacek did skate to at the Olympics. So we're connecting dots here, right? So um, you're starting to think like, okay, what's going on? And... I think that this team, you talk, I think that Pong and Wong have really great skating skills. Just their glide on the ice was more old school to me when I was watching it than so many teams that we see. And yes, you know, the Italians may have more point in, at point, but I really think that Pong and Wong have the potential, the up potential here. I just loved it. I don't know. What'd you think of them? Well, I always love to see people, new people coming up, and I love to see uh, nations uh, like uh, in, in, in figure skating. Other, you know, Asian countries and Chinese skaters. Like it's it's nothing new for them to be champions, but I really um, love to see new people become celebritized and mm -hmm. enter into that what I like to call the jeweled journey. It's there is no activity like skating and this team is um I, i'd like to i'd actually like to know more about the skaters personalities mm. uh get to know them i think you and i have had conversations with with certain interesting people icons and uh personalities in skating and i think there's a lot to be said for getting to know the skaters not just as oh they're an athlete and they work hard and everybody knows that but I think that, um, especially the Asians, I think are probably a lot more interesting as people and it will allow us to connect with them and their skating and invest in them. Like people invest in Debbie Thomas, like mm -hmm. back in the day, because they knew she was funny and smart and self-deprecating. I think that um, the more we learn and we have access to their 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 character and their person and their story, uh, it, it makes their skating even more interesting. Like Sway of Sway and Han, she was so interesting. She was here to root on Pung and this team. I think Pung has a fabulous personality. I think that we are seeing like 
little glimpses. This is her third partner we've watched her with. Yeah. She has the longevity. And I'm interested with this, this free skate that I think it was so fantastic. I loved yeah. it. I, I, uh, I'm a big fan of the Chinese pairs. I mean, like, who, who isn't, you know, um, they're mind blowing, you know? Um, but I think I, I just want to get to know this Asian countries are so much more reserved with, uh, their, their stars. And I, you know, we, you know, I think Yuzuru has really shown who he is and we got to, people love him because they fell in love with him. You know, and Kim Yuna singing in her commercials and showing yeah, singing of- like that's yeah. crazy. Um, and uh, I don't do you remember? Uh, maybe it was a long time ago when Nancy Kerrigan went on Saturday Night Live and she yes. sang. <laughs> it was like really funny. She doesn't sing, <laughs> but that kind of thing. We mean, Nancy more- Kerrigan had a CD come out. With she Mark- did. And it had some of the, where she sang, but I, there might've been another person involved, maybe in the background singing, <laughs> like on some of the J-Lo albums, um, where, uh, you know, uh, that Nancy sang Desperate Love, which was her short program music by Mark Militano. And there's one where there's, you know, a single version of that. So, but you know what? Nancy was a star and it was a new frontier and it was the nineties and they were yeah. throwing everywhere so she's fabulous I, I always she had a more of a sense of humor than people realize she had a whole amazing sense of humor i'm yeah. sorry but that thing yeah. when she i've always felt that when when she made that snarky comment about oksana get out there and cry again that's <laughs> actually hilarious you know and people vilified her for it. i loved it like she's you know it's true <laughs> and oksana has this sense of humor herself so right. you know right. I, yeah. Right. I didn't like think there was anything wrong. It's just like it, people are stressed out. She went through, I was training with her all in preparation for that. It was crazy. I was skating with her at a, at the, at Tony Kent. And uh, for anyone to come back as she did after what happened was like, again, superhuman. That was, that was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. And good and for her. People talk about Tanya's jumps, but look at Nancy's feet and her arms in her air position on those triples. I mean, her feet- And her so choreography. Cool. Yeah. Mary is- Mary, yeah, I talked to Mary, I communicated with her recently, and Mary is someone I loved to work with. She was very, very smart, uh, very strategic in her choreography, and I loved that. She was great. That Sandy Lenz program from 1980 is- the greatest paul's jfk i mean these are works of art that mary did so yeah paul uh is his programs his music his choreography his punctuation completely epic i have to be one of his biggest fans um i competed against him i roomed with him i did exhibitions and shows and been to meetings and he's even judged me, <laughs> you know, it's- He sure did. And he was looking at those circles and making sure people got back to center on there. When you put <laughs> them on the black ice, you should have seen him judging the competition when you were skating. Cause I was sitting, they, first of all, I was like sitting in the row so that I could film. And Paul was like, we shouldn't be sitting next to each other as judges. So I sat in between him and Jill Watson, I guess, so that they couldn't compare notes. And Paul had two sheets of paper where he was writing like, stream of consciousness notes. And then he made detailed notes for the score sheet. And I was like, that's the level of detail that we really appreciated this competition. So yeah, super intellectual. I I appreciate the uh, efforts that he makes to be as, uh, that's the thing about the world figure judges, world figure and fancy skating is they go out of their way to be as accurate as they possibly can. And that's a, a characteristic that I appreciate. And it's they're very, te- it's, they just go, they, they go way out of their way to be uh, accurate. It's, this is not a, a, a politics thing. It's not a, um, a favoritism. They're very accurate. Well, you also roped him in because he didn't judge the first day, but I watched you and Karen and, you know, he was just there, just, just looking, just standing. All of a sudden he's judging the next day. And you know that that was Shepard and Karen masterminding all of that. So you know, I had a lesson with him, you know, that morning and I was like, oh, are you going to go watch? Oh, I might stop by. He's judging the next <laughs> day. You're roping he knows exactly what he's looking at. He's great judge. 
Yeah. And what are you doing with Nicole Bobek? Because all of a sudden she's skating again and we know that she's your kind of a personality. Is she going to be doing figures? Like she looks fabulous on Instagram. Have you seen oh, how yeah. she did the spiral the other day and it was as good as it ever has been. Did you really? see it? I, I want to see it. Nicole is like my little sister. She, um, I trained with her uh, in like, my gosh, in Colorado Springs, in Sun Valley, on the Cape. Um, we kind of like paralleled one another like swans for a few years. You also have 18 coaches, Shepard? Like this is- Yeah, she did, she did. And her, she you, had, like her, figures too. her figures were very, very good when she okay. was little and then she didn't have to do them anymore. But she's one of the most naturally talented people I've ever seen in my life. She was kind of like Chris Bowman, except a, like a girl. Mm -hmm. uh, she could go out. I, I remember the day that she learned her triple flip and triple lutz. And that was early in the day. And then later in the day, there was a, a, another session and she was having trouble landing them. She was popping them over and over. And these three uh, very high level skating judges came in from across the street from U.S. Figure Skating Headquarters. And they just happened to come in the rink. And, and Nicole was on the ice and she took this piece of music. She used to like take music that I would bring to the rink and make up programs to it because she liked my music. So she took like Lara's theme from Dr. Zhivago or something. She put it on the machine and she made up a program to it. And Dave, I kid you not, she skated a clean program with seven triples, two lutzes, two flips, each in combination. Clean, long program that she made up from scratch when those three judges walked in. Good for her. You know that she was, we shared a warm up the first time that I ever performed in public. I had just started skating. I skated for about a year at this point. And um, we did a Christmas show. I was scared right? To like perform <laughs> in public. And I was like more timid in some ways back then. And like, it was like, oh my God, I'm performing in public on the ice. Like I forgot my own name at this moment. And Nicole <laughs> Beck is on the warm up doing her spiral. She did some program. It was when she was making her comeback after her troubles, but it was like a surreal moment. And yeah. I was too nervous to enjoy it, but it happened. Okay. Yeah. There, yeah. Yeah, I used to call her Bobby and the Bovacova. Like, uh, you know, <laughs> nicknames for Nicole. I when I was leaving Colorado Springs to go to Cape Cod, there was a, a party that the skaters had for me in sort of the snack bar area of the Broadmoor. Mm -hmm. And they had this big cake and it was like so nice for everyone to come together. It was like, it was really, really meant a lot to me. So she goes around the corner and she starts talking to me. And she's like, I really appreciate, you know, you being a friend and helping, you know, and like whatever like an older brother kind of thing. And then she takes a piece of the cake and just smushes it in my face and runs <laughs> off screaming. It was like, it was so, pretty funny. <laughs> there are people here that probably don't know who Nicole Bobek is that are here for current skaters. Go look her up. Do you have a favorite Nicole Bobek program that they should check out? I, I To me, I would say her Giselle at Nationals in 97 was just phenomenal. It was just, just stunning. And her costumes were Lauren Sheehan were great. And oh, and 98 Nationals, also her free skate was just just glitzy and fancy and the best. Um, yeah. Oh, I have to say, I didn't like the Italian Pairs vampire program. Oh, much, yeah, 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 yeah. Because Deanna was here and they their technique, <laughs> I mean, there was sow cow technique that I, I've never seen before from that Italian team. But I did, like, there's something about them that's like, I like, but... It just paled in comparison. Well, just the word Sal Cow. I mean, <clears throat> just the name itself is going to like, you know, inspire some something weird. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, yeah. everybody knows Sal Cow. You know, they, they, they've they heard that term before. Mm -hmm. Well, I you're one about moving sculpture. So we had two people here. We did not see Shoma Uno at his best. And and this is would be his third year winning uh, world. Should he pull it off? And the three Pete, there's usually a dip if you read books by coaches. And yeah. I've read Phil Jackson's book, uh, Eleven Rings, and he talks about you know how tough the three Pete was that year. Well, with Michael Jordan in '93. But if you go back, um, what did you make of? There's Adam Siohim Fa doing the Benoit aesthetic, and then there's Shoma yeah. Uno doing Lambiel. What do you make of these two artists? Well, Stefan and um, everything that Stefan did and choreographs, I'm I'm a fan of, and I think he's a cool guy. He's a really cool guy, uh, and I love what he does with his with his students. It must be very interesting working with him. I've always wondered what that must be like. Um, 
a sad for Shoma. I felt, you know, and it happens. It's to keep that level up. Uh, it's extremely difficult, obviously. Um, the gentleman who won. <laughs> Adam, yes. Adam, yes. Okay, French Adam, uh, you could call him whatever, yeah. So I love, I love the toe aerial. I'm in love with that. I used to do those when I, you know, because I did gymnastics a little bit when I was young and I skated. Um, I'm glad to see him performing it. That's extremely cool. I think that uh, his skating uses a lot of force, mm -hmm. a huge amount of energy. And um, I'm not seeing the, I'm seeing force. I'm not seeing finesse. I'm not seeing efficient use of physics. And that- Does he you know, not use the ankle? I don't get a lot of ankle bend from his skating. Do you notice that? Yeah, I appreciate what, what he's doing, who he is and what he's done. I don't want to like critique him in that way. I think that um, it must be very tiring, exhausting. Uh, and I would love to see him develop uh, a better um, efficiency with the use of physics. And um, when I watch a skater like that, um, I don't want to feel um, force. Hmm. And I don't want to feel as like, sometimes I can feel tired when I watch a skater, uh, but I appreciate, I appreciate, uh, you know, being able to do what he's doing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's incredible. It's incredible, but he's a completely different skater than someone like Shoma. I think he's going, unfortunately with Benoit, I, I worry with Adam because his quad lutz is beautiful and he has yeah, a good quad toe you. and, you know, he's really becoming consistent under pressure. I worry if he's peaking too early, but I also, with Benoit and him, you know, they, they do a lot of wide angle work on two feet instead of the one foot with an angle bend, you know, on the ice. And then there's a lot of this stuff happening. Where yeah, 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 yeah. And it's gimmicks for gimmicks sake. I don't know what the story of that free skate is. And frankly, I don't care to really find out. Yeah, yeah I, I don't really see, I don't know what the theme is and I see movement, um, but if they can give purpose and relevance and, and some kind of uh, where we know something uh it will definitely help him i but think he does have power i i wish him a, a new choreographer and um some work on the fire details of, of skating for his skating skills and i don't say that in a mean way because i think he actually is showing that he has the talent to go the distance right yeah, he does he's amazing <laughs> right once he become an olympic <laughs> champion these are the areas where he's going to need because yuma kakiyama is working with carolina costner and Queen Laurie Nickel, right? Like they are, yes, he might be, you know, a little bit quieter off, you know, in the corners working, but don't sleep on Yuma Kagiyama. Like, yes, Adam is winning right now with Benoit and Benoit is, you know, dressed in his designer suit and very confident in the kiss and cry. I wouldn't sleep on Queen Laurie Nickel. She has been around, she's a mastermind. Genius, yeah. Yeah, and with Carolina, who's also impressive, right? I just, I, I think they're winning right now, but I don't think the long game with this and this and whatever that shirt is in the free skate, I think it's gimmicks for gimmicks sake. And I think that the real quality skating will win out what we see from Yuma and what we see from, you know, some of the uh, Shoma Uno. I think Shoma could bomb six, seven competitions this season and maybe be brilliant at the world championships, you know, uh, based on how this could go. So I wouldn't count out Shoma yet. I think he, I don't think he's going to have a brilliant season, but I, I I would even maybe scrap the music of the free skate. I think they could do better. I think last year's music was so much better. I don't think that this is the same level of artistry. So critical, you've got to bring it um, with the music and create a, uh, a connection uh, really create a, a, a an emotional connection and land all those jumps and and everything else i mean it, i don't know how anyone can really keep it up i know how hard i had to work through the summer to prepare for the series uh in the autumn and then i needed to just kind of take a moment a breather because it was so intense like in like December and I wanted to kind of get away divorce myself from temporarily before us nationals which is always uh, a big adrenal drain. Um, but I, you know, the family reunion, I would call it. Um, uh, I think that, you know, I really give a lot of credit to the skaters in the world in which we're living, that they're able to 
deliver this formula that is there, there's an imposed sort of formula and I think that it does determine um, the best overall uh, of that kind of skating. It's very mm -hmm. interesting. It's it's very interesting, and I think there needs to be something that skaters can then go to to showcase what that foundation has prepared them to deliver on the crystal stage. Mm -hmm. Well, I have two questions for you about one of your close friends uh, who is no longer with us. But um, I seem to remember your close friend, Tyler Cranston, doesn't like the color gray on the ice. He says it's not a color that wins. And I agree with him. And Mathieu Caron did make me a gray costume when I was pushing for black and I didn't win that year. Um, and I just will say, and Shoma's wearing gray and Paul Poirier has those dreadful gray pants. What do you make of the color gray and Tyler's thing on it? It's just, it's not my favorite, Shepard. If the base is black and you want to use gray and silver and platinum uh, with it, but gray on its own is so not this and not that and so drab, uh, I, I really don't see gray working on uh, anyone. I think the closest to, to a program where it, and it wasn't a gray outfit. Mm -hmm. was the, uh, the short program uh, Alina skated to in the Olympics, mm -hmm. the, the swan. But of course, that was a swan. And it was, you know, it had the white and the black and the accents and the stones. And it was fabulous. It was really, really great. But gray, just like flat gray, forget it. Mm. I agree. And let, we need make, Anna Wintour to chime in. We need Anna Wintour. Yes. Uh, Vera Wang, who skated, right? Vera. Yes. And the other thing, speaking of... John Curry, who's behind us looking down. Why'd they hate each other so much? Was it just two divas, two geniuses? What, what's going on there? Yeah. <laughs> 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 two skaters who were as strong in their own right and um, revolutionary. Skating lost its virginity when they those guys came along and Dorothy came along, Dorothy was like the biggest star in America for a stretch of time. She was, like when I was little, she was Dorothy, huge. Dorothy yes. <laughs> Andy Warhol of her, <laughs> you know, yes. it's like cultural icon kind of thing. So yeah, there's Dorothy and then, you know, John Curry and Tala Cranston and, you know, uh, they had an impact on culture that vastly exceeded skating. Mm -hmm. It had to do with like being a human being and being a male and being able to deliver something uh, beautiful as a male, you know, and, and being able to like, like deal with that, like, you know, get past uh, stigmas that mm -hmm. people have had. So I think that that skating kind of lost its virginity in the, in the, in the mid seventies and they really did have an impact on on culture, and I think Tyler Cranston's art will probably be very much like, um, in a way, like Van Gogh. Like as time goes on, he'll be a more and more valued and recognized on, on an even higher and higher level. You know, there's a rumor that um, one of them had relations with Andre Nepal to you know dull his competitive edge of the competition. And I don't know if that's true or not. That is a rumor, but you know, in our mind, it was it's fabulous for skating if that happens. You know, yeah, I think there are all kinds of things that have probably happened over the years in skating that would no one would ever like uh, own up to. Or but how but about Dorothy Hamill even admitted in our interview that one of her main competitors' husbands chased her down in a car at the Olympics. You know, they, I mean, things that were happening in the 70s. There, uh, there was an incident where she and, and Carlo were walking on the side of the road in Austria, and there was an incident that was pretty serious, apparently. Yes, that's and she admitted it when we were on here, and that was um, phenomenal. You know, that coach... <laughs> Listen, I think anyone who knows who it is is just like, hmm, hmm, okay, that's uh, it, there, there, uh, there are again, like skating has much more color and uh, humor and like shock value. And I think I really love what you do, Dave, because you really do go there and bring out um, historic information and context 
uh, and, the, and the color that uh, hasn't previously been uh, brought to consciousness, brought to the surface. I think it's important uh, because a lot of other sports and sports cultures uh, make use of all of that. And so oh, it, it is fun. <laughs> I wanted to bring up one thing for you. Speaking of this, um, my brain just went there. You know, there's always that story, you know, and people always say like, don't never leave your skates unattended. And you never think it would happen nowadays, right? But remember how they would say, never leave your skates gone. And in Dorothy's book, she goes there and says that Gary Visconti's skates were ruined by a competitor when he left them, I think in the locker room. And this is Gary Visconti, a great champion from the US who also coached Paris Hilton, Nicole Richie, all of those wealthy girls when they skated in Los Angeles. Yeah. Name some of the most powerful people in Hollywood and most famous people that you know, and he's taught them to skate and he's best friends with. Gary knows more people like that than I, anyone I've ever met. And he just happens to be a skater. He's a, I've known him since I was very young. Mm -hmm. He used to coach one of my competitors and I've worked with him personally and he's judged me. And I've been to meetings, business meetings with him. And uh, he's very intelligent and streetwise and uh, a really interesting guy with amazing stories. Well, he, because of Gary Visconti, you don't leave your skates unattended. And that's <laughs> Queen Dorothy's book. So, that, right? yes. And also there's this part in Queen Dorothy's book where she and Sandra, where, and I've asked Sandra about it, and she took it that when she wanted to come back after having a baby, that Sandra said, why would you want to do that? And Sandra claims that she meant like, enjoy time with your daughter. And Dorothy took it, you know, a different way. And those are two queens and we love both of them and they're fabulous and their work together was amazing and we love it. But we just, you know, these are queens, Shepard. Sometimes people, I remember times when like I made a comment or somebody would make a comment and I think they meant well, but because of the 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 place a person was in in their head, yes, um, they might have misinterpreted it or whatever. I just think it's like you said, it's important to love each other and to hug one another and let people know that you know we're an extended family. And ultimately, I'm so appreciative of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, this like what I call the jewel journey. You know, I yes. I love the whole thing, and I think that just to be able to to um, love no matter what things have looked like the times again are crazy in the world and we edify one another and we are so thankful for for all of it and it's figure skating it's not that serious i mean it's our right. culture and our art but it's not figure skating <laughs> you know what do you think of luna hendrix she's doing this beyonce oh. um uh madonna program to me but it lacks the core technique right and the lack this is someone that would be a queen with figures right let me let me tell you like Luna, I first of all, her name, okay, mm -hmm. and uh, that short program costume and and long program costume for that matter, but uh, she's an actual, she's a lady, she's 23. To she's me, got, she's like Jill Trenery without the substance, you know. She's she kind of kind of you could make a comparison, yeah. Uh, I think Luna is colorful and like I to me, <laughs> she's like a, an exotic, uh, tropical, uh bird cocktail drink with an umbrella mm -hmm. you know refreshing and uh got uh some you know uh, uh you know some uh you know like I, a, like yeah. a beverage <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i think there should be a drink called a luna all right we can do this all right uh, watch your skate i mean i'm not really an alcoholic or anything but i'll tell you this i think that it's it's a breath of fresh air to see belgium and mm -hmm. a lady who has high fashion and has the fill in the blank uh, choreographically uh, to be on top of the skating world and to become as famous as she is now. I think but, she needs to spend some time maybe with Raphael or someone that can just up the technique a little bit, you know, and up the preparation a little bit. Cause we saw her fall off here and in the past, and we know that there's something there, you know, there's a reason we're talking about her. She didn't win yeah. here. And she, she has, has she has brought a flavor and she's brought Belgium and she's brought 23 and she's brought fashion and she's brought uh you know Vogue <laughs> and that incredible uh daring 
interesting, interesting short program. Um, we need some of that European aesthetic uh, to to be celebritized in the figure skating world. I'm curious what you think of this because your good friend Karen Cortland Kelly, who did the figures class that we would like to see you on Saturdays at noon, I posted a link so everyone can see how fantastic it is and do it with us. And Queen Debbie Thomas does it. And we're doing Bolero as we're doing the movement right on our ankles going forward and back. Okay. And if you go see it, I posted the link uh, yesterday. This Karen has a theory that skaters who under rotate never learned because we didn't see this in the 80s right they never learned the push for the back outside figure from the left to the right and they don't know that muscle movement of the entrance to the back outside eight and could luna benefit from this because all of her jumps are a little like you don't want to get the glasses on the microscope to know if they're really rotated and that's why she's doing the arms up to get her to down, <laughs> right? But right. <laughs> you need her to do that back left to right movement. I have to give that some thought. Uh, Karen typically is spot on anatomically. She teaches Pilates and she has theories. She's built her own theories on movement and uh, she knows what she's talking about. So I think that maybe... There may be some. Uh, Listen, I think maybe her brother should get her to um, do this to warm up every day and we can just work this movement because she could be if Luna Hendricks won the worlds in Montreal, I think it would move skating forward because there she has the you know how Ashley Wagner when she did Moulin Rouge. It moved, and it, I think it's a travesty that they didn't put her in the uh, Hall of Fame this year. They didn't put her on, on the ballot, and I think that's a huge mistake because Ashley is one of the last stars of figure skating. I, it, I have to tell you something. Ashley was a bona fide celebrity. She mm -hmm. had, and I was, uh, she, mm -hmm. she, was, she was cultivated, packaged into an actual skating celebrity. And I think and there were that has that. I think Luna has a little bit of the Diva Wagner in her. Yeah, she, oh, totally. <laughs> and an interesting comparison. I agree with you on that. She needs a little more of it. You know, like Mariah Bell almost had it, but she was like too sweet, right? Luna has the pizzazz that Ashley had. Yeah. You know? Mariah is sweet and she's beautiful and amazing and awesome skater. Uh uh, yes, I I, I agree that uh, as far Ashley as Ashley has told me off, done interviews left, right, center, and I still want to watch her. You know, like we, you know, like that's a star. You know, Ashley was a star, like Johnny was a star in figures. Yeah. And I'm very impressed with his academy, I have to tell you, watching the work that he's doing and from what I've heard from people. It, it takes a number of years to develop um, one's uh, person mm -hmm. in, in, in that sort of a sophisticated way and, and be up there in, in those ranks for enough years. Um, so, it, you know, it doesn't surprise me. We have a, 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 a lady who is 23, and she is coming into her own as a celebrity personality who happens to be a figure skater. She she does have those characteristics. Her name is, she has a celebrity name. She wears celebrity fashion. She has an incredible face. I mean, she looks so young. Um, and she her body gets into shapes and moves in ways. Her spins are, are, are very interesting. So I think we do have, uh, you know, who are going to be the, not just the, like the, the, the great skaters, but who are the, the celebrities, the stars who are like kind of can, can be bigger than the sport even. Well, I think Ashley Wagner's uh, Moulin Rouge at Boston Worlds was one of the last great moments uh, in, in in skating. It was one of those things where you're like, you know, Jason Brown's Riverdance was a privilege to be there live. Yeah. I think that Moulin Rouge was a real moment in front of that audience. And I think Luna has that potential for Montreal Worlds, the same way Chalk and Bates, Deanna. Like, these are like stars that you can like pick out, you know, that the sport needs um, and, and I think that it would be important for skating for that to find its wings. So I hope that they work on that rotation and some of her confidence and that physical preparation to really get in the best shape of her life for that competition and to peak at the right moment, which they've talked about doing. Yelim Kim is another one who her dress is a million bucks in the free skate. Okay. You know, Queen Sandra and King David Wilson put this together. I'm not sure about the version of Just We Malad, why they chose it. Um, I, you know, there's the other versions of Lara Fabian, but yeah. I, 
and she seems to have lost her confidence in her jump takeoffs, but she has something that is mind blowing. Um, and Hana Yoshida, I was curious what you thought of her from Japan. She, in the short program, she has this sparkle. She did land the triple axel in the long with a step out. What do you, you know, I was wondering if you had thoughts on her. In, in review of this set of up and coming skaters, uh, when I, when I look at her, in the lineup of the skaters, I think uh, again, it's not as it's not yes on the ice. The training is really really important. I think that more of the challenge at this point is mentally like, conceptualizing a way of packaging oneself uh, like Luna has packaged herself. Mm -hmm. mm. The key okay. is how do I distinguish myself? I'm not just a skater who lands my jumps and has a pretty dress, but I distinguish myself um, because there's a parade, an endless parade of talent. And it's amazing. It's like fun to watch. It's, it's incredible. But there are the ones who come in who, um, you know, metaphorically are the, uh, the rare tropical bird um, umbrella uh, beverage, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like colorful fruit, uh, alcoholic beverage, uh, you know, like, like Luna with, with, the, with the, that kind of a name. I mean, it's, she's got enough of the characteristics of a celebrity, um, that you could do a lot with that. I lived, I lived in Hollywood for years mm -hmm. and I was always fascinated by, um, packaging, mm -hmm. how to, cr how to create fascination, how to get people to want something. I think a lot of times skating, is about how to make yourself the most desirable thing in the world to be unobtainable to do things that everyone looks at and wonder how do they do that you know but you also have to look a certain way and uh it's an interesting uh challenge for years i was kind of selling myself packaging myself and i had all kind of challenges and everybody does uh with the injuries or you know changing co coaches or moving or coach retires whatever everybody has their challenges but i think that uh the game, the name of the game in skating, uh, which really distinguishes it, is how to make yourself into this desirable, beautiful package. Skaters are beautiful. Mm -hmm. well, I think you're right. In it, you know. He has the ingredients, but we need to add the right stuff to it. And it's so interesting because I'm at the part of Queen Barbara Streisand's memoir, which oh, oh, is yeah. listening to her read it. I mean, she's going for, I mean, I don't know the Nobel Peace Prize of audio <laughs> I don't know, like the way her, her performance, it's a performance, let me tell yeah. you. But, you know, she's right at the part of her life where she's not getting the acting gig she wants. So this man, Barry, is talking to her and she's like, fine, I'll sing. You know, she's not, she doesn't want to sing. She's not a singer. She's an actress, okay? She's an wow. actress playing a singer. Ah. Right now, she's just being like, not a singer, right? She'll sing to make herself more interesting, but she's doing it so she can act. And you know what? Barbara was right. She made herself. She made herself with those ingredients so that she could come to the top. And that's what these girls, they need to claw their way to the top, Shepard. They need to move forward. Barbara Streisand is a fascinating case study mm -hmm. in how to do what you just said, um, but also distinguish oneself among celebrities and icons, like to be in all of the, that crowd, but then to be viewed as being like in your own class and league. Yes. Uh, Streisand is in her own box. Like I've listened to Queen Patty Lapone's audio, Patty, who I love, you know, but I really think I'm so sick of her yelling about Glenn Close and Sunset Boulevard because Listen, Barbara's two tracks that she recorded, if she had decided that she wanted to do that, would have put them both to shame. And Patty needs to know her place there. That's what I truly believe. Yes. I think one of the things that fascinates me about Barbara Streisand is as a little child, one of my favorite, one of the most beautiful pieces of music I ever heard was in the club show. The the senior, the oldest girl in the show, the oldest skater I looked up to was skating to Evergreen. Mm. which is an incredible piece of music. Art word. Yes. Yeah, mm. yeah. And I remember um, getting to know, like, who is this Barbara Streisand? And even back when I was a little child, she was a massive star. Um, she's impeccable. She, yeah. Her standards, and it might drive people crazy around her, but 
she has these standards and when when she delivers she delivers flawlessly i mean like uh i don't know i mean i've seen great performances but but she has this aura about her that's very 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 intense and she she maintains her um her image and uh and and um career decisions in a way that's a, an interesting case study she she lives every day like she's Queen Michelle Kwan at the Nationals. Let's be honest, okay? Like, she, like <laughs> right? Get her but sixes. She is, <laughs> you know, that's yeah. what, what she's what she's been for a long time. And she's what, another thing about her that's a crazy is she was like a woman when I was a child, mm -hmm. and I think of her like still being young. Like I still think of her as being like not a not a uh, person more of more advanced age, but having like a youthful energy around who she is and, and what she's even today. Well, her interview with Howard Stern was fantastic uh, this week. So, uh, but anyway, I'm curious what you make of um, a skater that was at the Figure and Fancy Skating Championships who's going to be at the Ice Dance Final this week because I skate with a number of ice dancers. And I have to say, I love to watch the Ice Dance Final in the younger levels because it reminds me of Dance Moms. And there's something about these kids coming to the top. And when you know them, it is so great to watch in Ice Dance, which you said was the best discipline right now. And I agree. Roman Wysik in ice dance, because I watched him practicing his fancy thing on the black ice when Karen was bringing me out of the chair on the black ice to go watch someone. And I saw this boy skating around with this extension for days and this inner artist that I was like, who is that? And yeah. he, I'm Polish and he has the Polish flag bedazzled in the back of his skates. Yes, okay. What is he like in ice dance? He's competing this week. I'm excited. Right. To he and Isabel, I see him all the time at the rink. Okay. They are very, very good. I mean, I enjoy watching a team that's that young, taking it as, you know, seriously. Um, Roman is rare. He practices his figures every day. They're actually pretty oh, good. His mom had to do the Iron Cross, you know, or the Maltese Cross. Yes, yeah. the Iron Cross. I not, oh, the Maltese <laughs> Cross, not the Iron Cross. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I got a story. When he was warming up at World Figure in the junior level, he skated a Maltese Cross when he was relaxed and he was on a nice clean piece of ice behind the, the cones. Mm -hmm. He skated a Maltese Cross that would have won senior. Yes, we have the video of this. Of us talking about and it. I was <laughs> watching him, and there was a, a group of us standing, like, "Look at that! Oh my gosh!" It's like, you were commentating on my here. camera when you were oh. watching this. <laughs> and I was like, "There's no way when they blow that whistle, he's going to do it. Like, not like that, because that's a figure that's psychological. It's here's the problem with the Maltese cross. You have to dare greatly. You have to get that like the curve, rocker counter, rocker counter, rocker." And when the whistle blows and you're nervous and it's so easy to put your foot down, if you put your foot down, you lost the figure. So to get those curves uh, and that like arc on the top and to get it north, south, east, west, when you're really like you tighten up just a little bit makes all the difference. I know that my Maltese cross was not my favorite this year. It was better than last year. Um, Debbie was not as happy with her Maltese cross, but uh, even uh, what, Roman laid out still ended up winning in junior so I was really happy for him and I'll never forget his facial expression on the podium he had this very very satisfied look standing there and I thought good for you good for you he, he's on his way are retired when that boy comes into his own with the figures because it's coming <laughs> <laughs> right please <laughs> hurry up I can't keep doing this <laughs> but you, I'm I, 53 I don't know if he's against this boy. So I skate with, um, I've skated with Vasilisa Sorova since she was eight. And I worked with her father, Roman, on jumps. He's a great jump coach. Uh, he coaches um, Sasha Fegan, who's just like a phenomenal up and coming talent. Roman, Roman's a really great jump coach and a hilarious guy. Um, yeah. And uh, Adam Esfandieri, who I skate with, is this young boy who's 11 but he's driven to win the Olympics and he grew up with Michael Parsons and idolized him and, and wants to be this 
champion and Igor Lukanin's always yelling at me for being intense. And that Adam is uh, maybe more intense as an 11 year old who wants to win. And they're skating to the conga and they do a shimmy and it's in juvenile and you got to watch it because they are going to really do something this week. So I'm excited for this ice dance final to watch this sectionals us figure skating finally got on youtube I, we only suggested it for twenty seven thousand years and now we can all watch it and hopefully they will archive them for longer because it is worth watching and they need to build an audience but um people i hope that they enjoy it um this week i just i don't know you brought something for cup of china that you told me off camera i said just save it here what did you bring you had a little decorative oh. thing you were showing at me it's over here mm -hmm. i you know I'm a collector of Chinese art among, you know, all kinds of art, but I'm a big fan of Chinese art. And of course, Shut Cup of China, you know, skating, uh, like we were talking about, uh, there was an emperor of China a thousand years ago in the Song Dynasty who liked to skate. And of course, there was a, an ice show in, I think, the 1700s exclusively during the Qing Dynasty, exclusively for the emperor at the palace. And uh, there's a famous painting at the, at the, uh, the palace museum that has 2000 characters in it. It was a huge ice show. And the, the finale of the show was the concubine of the emperor coming out and being presented like a jewel. <laughs> I just think that's crazy. Yeah. And it's awesome and wonderful and amazing. And, and China has such a great history with skating that most skaters don't know. Now, what I am holding is, this is porcelain. And I'm thinking it's Kangxi, the Kangxi emperor, uh, longest emperor uh, in China, the Qing dynasty. Uh, late 1600s, early 1700s. It's like a little snuff bottle. I love it. Yes. And like smoking or a little medicine bottle. Smoking in China was illegal back in the day. So they would take tobacco and they would grind it up into a really fine powder. And um, people would use it kind of as a, a medicine or as a greeting or as a, a thing people would share socially. So we pull these out. They were supposed to fit really comfortably in your hand. And you pull these out and offer it to someone. And it was like telling time from a Rolex watch, you know, for the people in China back in the day. They were made of jade, uh, ivory, glass, quartz crystal, um, lapis, uh, carnelian, agate, like all of these different amazing materials. But it seems like every single one of them is different. Yeah. You know, they're kind of addictive. <laughs> Getting into art is something my therapist was you know, talking about a therapist uh, that has been just brilliant with EMDR. And we were talking about how, you know, there's this art in Japan and this um, where it's broken and then they put it back together with gold. Right? Yes. It's always the thing, like if something's broken, is it ever as beautiful? And in Japan, it becomes more beautiful, you know, like more resilient and it's put together. And I think it's, it's just stunning. Uh, One of the great metaphors in art and uh, is that uh, practice in Japan of uh, it's a an incredible skill of utilizing gold to seal something that's been broken, where they take something that uh, has a, had a um, sort of a, a tragedy, like a person, and because of it, they find the beauty and the power uh, and the value in the experience and carry it forward. And I think that's a really valuable metaphor and lesson about life through the arts. Yeah, I was in such a place when she told me about it and I was really like moved and always remember that. And I think it's it's really, you know, stunning uh, in terms of art. And I know that you're an art lover. So uh, yeah, I just appreciate that so much. There's also, you keep talking about these Chinese ice shows and I keep thinking about Pung. And if any viewer has a link to this, cause it was on Weibo and I don't know how to search on there. Um, but Pung, this is her third partner, right? First, she used to skate with the Zhang, and Zhang used to skate with another partner named Zhang. And they were in the 2006 Olympics, and they had the big fall that stopped the program. And, yeah, then, yeah, yeah. and then she skated with him, and he was like 20 years older than her. And we used to call them the father and the daughter because they just looked so inappropriate together. Like, show <laughs> Brian Wells, okay? Like, what is going on here? Like, Danny and his current partner, right? Like, it's just so uncomfortable to watch, right? Um, and and God bless Shelby was great, you know, and did singles and pairs. And anyway, they had a thing where she was switching partners with this other team and they did an ice show where they started with, and obviously the Federation switched this partnership up. Well, they had an ice show where they started with their original partners and midway through the program, 
they literally swapped girls and then they finished the program in this Chinese ice show. So in my mind, this is for the emperor and this is what, you know, we should <laughs> you keep bringing it up where my mind keeps going. So if anyone has a link to this, I need to rewatch and revisit this because it was one of, you know, it was during the off season, but it was one of those things in skating where you're like, did that just happen? Yes, it happened. Okay. And that's- You're reminding me of Blades of Glory and the scene where they have the videotape out of like North, North Korea. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I saw something on the Tony Wheeler channel that made me pee this week. Okay. Because if you've ever been coached by Russians, you know that they don't exude joy. They they call it the American smile, the American it's, you know, smile. Mm, they think it's phony and awful, right? Yeah. <laughs> But Queen Tatiana Tarasova, who's more over the top than anyone, and and Galina Zmievskaya would say that she herself is not a nice lady, and neither is Tarasova, but they're women who get results, so who cares? This is what she told me. She goes, Marina Zueva, Tatiana Tarasova, Galina, we're not nice women, but we get result, so who cares? Right, that was her MO. And I'm watching Tatiana Tarasova get results, and at the end of her ice show, she has them all come out to a chorus line and they're like all going like this and it's so ridiculous and bad <laughs> and, <laughs> and you need to see it to see Russians trying to exude a chorus line and Igor Spielbond and his first wife are there, Yuri of Chik- uh, you know, of Chikanov, uh, <laughs> Makar, Barov, like you need to just watch these Russians and it's like they're coming out like a clown car. They just keep coming out from back at the end of the <laughs> it is so great. <laughs> that is great. I, you know, you're reminding me. I worked with Tamara Mastvina. Oh yes, <laughs> another wonderful person who may be trained by the KGB allegedly, and you kind of know it when you speak to her, and yet you love everything she says. Yes. Yes, and <laughs> yes. she, she. I mean, I'm enamored and in awe. And she used to say to me something so basic and so awesome. She, and it was the way she said it. You know. She said, Shepard, are you better today than you were yesterday? And she used to ask me to lift her into in pair lifts. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking? <laughs> I was terrified because I didn't want to like have a problem and, and drop this like living legend that I had so much respect for, but I had even more respect because she asked me to like do pair moves with her. You know, I'm a single skater. Uh, I made a pair of earrings for her once, and uh, I really loved working with the Russian, uh, the coaches, and doing shows with them. And I try to maintain my communication with the Soviet and the the Russian skaters I've I've known um, from the time I was very young, and they're just part of our family. And I think just doing whatever we can to lift each other up and edify one another, and um, have a lot of fun along the way. You know, the world's crazy, but this is good. Skating is good. Well, she's so fast. I mean, her performance in meddling, that Tara Lipinski documentary with her husband, Todd, where they, when you know she's gaslighting you, she's lying, she's acting like we're dumb Americans, and she is phenomenal in it, and you still love her, you know? (laughs) (laughs) It, it, It doesn't matter. She has this amazing quality. And I'll tell you, the Champions on Ice tour, I heard from several people this story of my former coach and Tamara, you know, that maybe the, you know, the Soviet Union was like the dark ages in some respects, and they were coming to America all the time. You know, they were in poverty and Galena knew where every Saks Fifth Avenue was in America because that's how she, <laughs> right. she and Tamara Moskvina were having Tommy Collins, may he rest in peace, hide computers in his hotel room so that they could bring them back to the Soviet Union and sell them back there and make money. And those are just genius women. That's amazing. I never heard that. That's that's incredible. You know, and that's one of those things like respect, Tamara, respect, like just, yes. Okay, of course she did it, you know, and Yes, and she's still coaching, and now she and a Terry are going to square off at Russian Nationals in pairs, and as much as I don't like what Putin's doing in the war, I do want to watch that matchup of Tamara against a Terry. You can't tell me that I don't want to watch it. I want to see which one of them is going to come out on top. One of the interesting things about skating is that the world has a lot of 
crazy politics going on right now, but skating, the skating world involves a lot of those countries and we love each other and we support one another. And um, I think it's important to know that, that people, human beings, despite all of the context of the times in which we're living can still love one another and edify one another, um, especially in uncertain times. Skating, I, you know, I, I really am glad that we kind of went there for a second because it is important to think like I see parents sometimes at the rinks uh, with a certain look on their faces, people are stressed out and they come into the rink and I call it church. You know, I say, we can be this family. What we're doing is a privilege. It's very, very special. It's the best thing in the world. And we're doing it together, no matter what the outcome is. And there's all kind of learning curve and we all like go through our learning curve. It's life, but it's, it's a really wonderful way uh, to uh, experience the learning curve of life. Well, you also brought one of my favorite things. You talk about church. Um, I actually almost lived with someone who was so obsessed with Judy Garland that he might be a Judy Garland impersonator. I went to his apartment and I didn't know how to even take it. Like he he answered the door and he had our Judy Garland ring and everything was the worst. It was, I, I, I couldn't take it at the time. It was, it was too much for me. I didn't think I was up to um, It happened, but um, and it was in Hoboken. But um, you skated to Rufus Wainwright's um, reenactment of Judy Garland's great concert. And I that did not go unnoticed for me. You talk about art when he recreated her infamous concert. So one, how did that come about? And what are you doing next, Shepard? I've been uh, examining very carefully because a uh, world figure is really, again, a, a lot of it's psychological, like, like mental. You've got to come up with, conceptually come up with uh, some kind of a message. We genuinely are creating art on the ice. The figures are the records. It's skill mm -hmm. that everyone does, uh, apples to apples, the fine art of drawing with your entire body. Then we take that to the creative figure where we're literally creating a work of art uh, where we use our figure skills and our heart, our mind to come up with a concept and then deliver it on the ice, um, which I've never seen before in skating. It's more than like just a creative figure. It's a legitimate work of art. Uh, created on the ice. Then finally, we have the fancy skating where we take the figure aesthetic and uh, the, the judges can see the lines that we're creating as we move and they don't want to see balance checks. And heaven forbid you should put your hand down or worse, fall or swear. They want to see musicality. They want to see moving sculpture. They want to see, um, they want to see us take them on the jeweled journey. Mm -hmm. uh, five minutes or less and yeah. so i really love like with you for example one of the objectives for this year is to show how someone who is intelligent and is an archivist as an important to the skating of his skating's history is also exemplifying the fact you can start later and still become famous as a skater and as a great skating artist and um utilizing uh things like uh, pilates and nutrition to be able to maximize your potential. I know I can see as you skate what you're capable of and how satisfying that's going to be for you for your entire life. And skating is something that we should be doing it as families, as communities, and for a lifetime. Well, is there gonna be another division? Because I'm not ready to do this pirouette, boucle, yeah. you know, whatever. Like, come on, this is, I know Karen <laughs> Portman is a screamer. I'm not like, ready to the pirouette. <laughs> and Karen says that, you know, we should have no blockages, but you know, I, I do know what I'm capable of in a year, I think, you know, like, and I'm a, we're working very hard, Shepard. We're, we're working with Pilat, we're working hard right now. The, so, you know, we are. A major part of it, I think is conceptual to say, okay, what is the story that you want to tell? And to be able to, that people will know in advance. Oh, that's what this program is. They're gonna know. So. Oh, I'm skating a program this year where there's a real story because I didn't compete last year for a reason. And this- I told this, Debbie this last year, I said, skating will never be more fun. Mm -hmm. It'll never be more fun than this. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Karen, I call up Karen Kwan, help me make that program as she has connected and been an, an important person personally in terms of different decisions and support at critical moments. And we created something. So, and that's Karen, my love, my best, and a big hug from Shep. 
we love Karen, who's as sassy as the day is long, you know? Yeah. And, and, uh, <laughs> and she has a daughter who's a dancer and another daughter who's a gymnast and we're watching this and, you know, she's kind of like the, um, the quiet gem of the Quan family where there's so much attention on fabulous Michelle who is like Barbara with her Instagram. Do you, have you ever see Michelle's Instagram? It's a work of Karen art. can be loud too, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I can. I, I love her. Um, go ahead. Sorry, no, I had never done a left outside counter before, and she's making me do it. She put it in the program from a swing roll, and it's a transition. Two of them in there. My heart beats. You know, like when you do the big element in skating, and your heart goes up. It goes up for the counter, not the spin. <laughs> it goes up for the counter. Okay, <laughs> like every time. You know what's funny is I was talking to Debbie the other day about um, doing rockers, and as you get older, as a youth, they're they're difficult turn, especially to control it coming out. Um, but as you get older, you think of it in like, oh my gosh, I landed my rocker. And so we were we were joking about having uh, the coaches work with us uh, on the harness <laughs> oh, when we're doing a rocker. So that's that's something I want to share with you. When, when someone performs an exquisite turn in and out to the music in the spotlights with their costume, and there's a story going on, the judges can see the ice. They can see the entry and the exit and the turn like John Curry. They can see the integrity. And if there's any you know uh, lack of integrity, that will show up on the ice. So a figure aesthetic is incorporated into the judging of the fancy skating. And I think one of the most satisfying things is that fancy skating is absolutely for the skating purist. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Queen Sarah Joe, you know what I want to steal? Is that long inside to outside back edge that she does where she just holds it forever, okay? Yeah. That is the most phenomenal move that we, Liz Schmidt needs to steal that from her, the great Liz Schmidt. Liz Schmidt the great Liz Schmidt. All right, yeah. let's talk about who needs to do this event next year because we need to yeah. get on it. You're getting I mean, both. Uh, Sarah Joe stretches for three hours before she does her program, just so you know. Yeah, yeah Sarah Joe <laughs> claimed, oh, I just threw this together in a couple of days. Yeah, okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then she told me she likes to practice for five hours a day. Okay, so like, let's just, let's just cut the shit, okay? <laughs> Next year, I love her dog. Okay, King David Shapiro needs to be due. He is David the Shapiro greatest, must be world figure. He is the greatest artist, and he works with Arena in um, Delaware, who is phenomenal. And my friend Glencore, we're going to rope her in. You don't know her yet, but you will. Kate Mangiardi says every day she's not going to do it. She will do it next year. Don't you worry. Okay, this is I'm, yeah. I wanted her to definitely David Shapiro. I'm a big fan. He's awesome. He's amazing. Liz Schmidt. And Daniil. There's no question. Yeah. And then you'll get Lorna there, you know, with her, you know, Shepard, you know, and then- I love uh, Lorna. You will get, you need Yevon Mock. Come on. I mean, yeah. Yevon Mock needs, to, did you, I mean, her figure, uh, the, the, the pirouette, you need Yevon Mock there. You need David Shapiro. These people need to be running, not walking to do this on the black ice. Shepard. These are world champion artists. They deserve to be celebrated on the crystal stage and uh, to uh, take their proper place in skating's history and in skating's family. And um, I think we're also gonna have a very special year. Uh, you know, it's the 10th anniversary of World Figure Sports Society. It's also next year is gonna be the 100th anniversary of the Winter Olympics. And uh, Ludmilla and Oleg, we're, we're planning something uh, rather extraordinary. And we're looking to get the top thousand people in skating in the world to fill the 1932 rank. The 1930 rink, which has a photo outside it of Maribel Vincent Owen, Sonia Henney, <laughs> uh, and the Pearl uh, Magnet, uh, you know, from the Great Reflections on Ice documentary, like incredible, Fritzy Berger, sorry. Uh, Fritz, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just incredible. Um, and someone told me that there's a Mary Scott Bold, um, first of all, she needs to be there. Mayor needs to be there. for. I, the I'm working on it. We can do sit spins together, like yep. come, you know, me. Mary. I love Mary. Mary's very special. She needs to be at that event, um, and and I and I think that you. I want to see what Bobek Spiral could do on the Crystal Stage. Like I want to see Nicole do some creative spirals that we haven't seen before. Yeah. Like what what could and we need Queen Alyssa Sisney, who I am working on. Just Alyssa Sisney, I'm a huge fan. Nicole's figures back in the day were excellent. 
like people looked at her free skating and they never got a chance to really see her do figures. But I have to say, uh, her figures, even as a girl, she 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 was excellent. Like it was crazy. How were Tanya's figures. People were asking me about that. Ooh. Tanya Harding. What were her what were her figures like? Not her favorite event. Um Yeah, it was uh, to be a senior lady, you had to get past the eighth test, which was extremely, I mean, extremely difficult. I mean, crazy. Um, but her free skating was like so crazy good that, you know, um, her, 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 she was not known for her figures. I want to see Janet's figures and I want to talk to Janet about figures, because if you think about where she was in the world, her figures couldn't have been bad. Right. And they made well, her the phenomenal free skater. She I was. think she was like. 12 or she's one of the youngest people ever to pass the eighth test and and one of the things people have to remember is back in the day in figure skating they wouldn't even allow you to take it unless you were like junior champion or one two or three in junior you didn't even have the privilege of taking an eighth test unless you were a junior champion they wouldn't allow you to be a senior unless you were a junior champion so that really continued uh, I remember I was a junior champion taking my gold and Carlo Fossi was with me at the Broadmoor and I passed it, but I didn't pass it way over. I mean, it, it was really, it took an, um, over an hour. I slept for a day after it. I was so tired. <laughs> I'm getting Jana Shodin to do. To, cool. On the Pilates reformer. She won figures at Junior Worlds. Let's, and, not let's you know, let's. Yeah, and Mark is getting her on the Pilates machine. We'll rope him in. You know, just interesting. You just gotta. Yeah, definitely, I've got to bring these these people, these families, uh, dynasties, uh, to be there. I think uh, uh, Priscilla Hill may may be there. I talked to her for a bit recently. Elaine Zayak. I'm trying to get Elaine to come. We need to get Roslyn, of course. Oh my God, you need Roslyn to, to come. Uh, we're working on we're really working on everybody this is How about queen linda in her mink because you love a jewel and who i love linda? linda fradiani i i love her and i love her mink i have I you love her level of glamour <laughs> that where you're at uh, right now like linda with... and i want to you know what i want to see linda and cheryl franks together i just think that they are opposites like the odd couple and we need that together yeah, when they get together i just like to listen to them they're really funny and I'm working on Yuri, you know, he, he's doing the figure, you know, he, he yells and he, he's into it. You know, we can bring him there. He was yeah, the one. Yeah, we got to have, it's like skating's VIPs and socialites and royalty all because they, they are the ones who should have the privilege of being at a figure event because it's nail biting, you know, and you're holding your breath as these people are doing these extremely difficult, like we're, we're, we're talking about having something called a loop flower. For this next year, <laughs> this next year, <laughs> then the morning of the final, Debbie's having breakfast mm -hmm. and I come into the kitchen of the condo in Lake Placid and I said, Debbie, did you ever think you'd be as nervous for a loop and an axle? <laughs> you know, we were like so nervous. <laughs> well, listen, you and Debbie together is a show in of itself. This is, <laughs> we need Bo back there, obviously, for this mix of personalities. I mean, and where is Bo? We have to have Bobby. Oh my God. If you, Debbie, and you know, if you, Debbie, and Bobek are together, I think that the spirit of Christopher Bowman will just come out on the ice necessarily. You know, that's just a prerequisite, I think, for yeah. these kinds of personalities. Yeah. But that, I mean, some left of center personalities, Shepard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. But yeah, I, I'm fascinated by that. Um, I forget where I was even going, but yes, the nail biting, yes. I think the scoring to realize Marianne Tish and, and Beth Warnoff and Debbie, how they were so neck and neck and that Debbie wasn't winning going into the final figure, but we weren't sure, but... But I think that you were all lucky that Debbie's creative figure on the day of the competition wasn't what it was the day in practice because <laughs> that was the art. Okay. One look at that and I said, Chip, you need to up your game. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Well, Shepard, you took your sweet ass time on that creative figure. You were out there for like 10 minutes by yourself. Okay? I don't know. What was <laughs> I, was like, I can't say what I thought in my head, but it was something like, I'm going to 
figure. <laughs> you know, like I, I knew that that was going to be a wild card. They always make a big deal in gymnastics about who goes last, right, at an event. And sometimes the judging is so, and you always want the last person to be on floor and to, to be yeah. like Svetlana Hork, you know, or Simone Biles. Oh, she, oh, she was awesome. Yes. Well, Lana, what, like what, Shepard what? Clark was taking his sweet time to make sure he was the last one on the, on the black ice. The okay. biggest, the most imposing, right in the center of the ice, right? Yeah, you had the prime spot, Shepard. You know who scared me? Mark Fenzak. With really? his okay. His his tulip scares me because it's so beautiful. It's just such a beautiful shape. And I'm like, you know, he's he's so good at the creative figure. That's part of it. As an artist, this is this is it's not art from the perspective of being like totally subjective. It's not. There are objective characteristics that skating people can look at and evaluate fairly. And yeah. and it, it really is a, a very satisfying structure uh, within which to perform and be evaluated. Well, I wanna know what your moment of the week is. I'll tell you what mine was, is how we end, because there's something that I think fits in line with what you're talking about and I want people to rewatch it. But at the end of Deanna and Max's footwork sequence in the short program, they do back inside loops and then they do this arm movement by the boards that that's starting to come out now that we're at this point in the season where you're seeing the personality and yeah. the music and they're in those stunning costumes and we know you like fashion and the skating level of detail and quality and their improved skating skills that level of detail at the end of the footwork sequence is like it's like when Marilyn Charlie did the Bollywood program and they had that that side-by-side -side step that went across the ice. That was yeah. the problem. This cool. ending of cool. their, to see a pair do a footwork sequence with substance. I mean, we're missing no one by people being banned when they did yeah. that at the end. Yes. Deanna, um, big shout out, lots of love and a huge hug. Amazing, I'm so proud of her. Um, Luna. <laughs> Luna, you love Luna. Luna Short. Um, you know, she's just very special and I love her name and I love the effort she's making to distinguish herself and bring high fashion and a uh, really fun um, uh, star quality and choreography and fun and fun to the performance. I love it. Well, thank you so much for being here. This was such a thrill to discuss skating and art and music and you never disappoint, Shepard Clark. Thank you so <laughs> oh, much. <God. laughs> thank you, Dave. Thank you so much. Bye now.